This video is going to go over how to do the Premier Products exercises. We'll do the first eight of them on page 115 to give you an idea of what your finished homework product that you upload to me for grading should look like. Hopefully by now you've read the chapter three. You have reviewed both sets of um, the chapter three lecture videos. I believe there are two of them. And you should have already downloaded and installed the MySQL product. So the next step is going to come into the doc sharing area of your course and in the data sets MySQL category you'll find three data sets. I'm going to be using the one for the MySQL Premier for this example and when I download that data set it's going to open up a notepad like this. And so I'm going to go ahead and just do a control A to select all and a control C to copy. So that places it into the Windows clipboard. Then I'm going to go ahead and open up the MySQL product. And when I'm in the MySQL, I'm using the MySQL workbench. I first need to go ahead and connect. So I'm going to click database, connect to database, OK. And that should open the, um, the SQL editor. And then once I get in here, I'm going to go ahead and paste. And so I've taken everything from that uh, work, uh, notepad file and pasted it here. And what this is going to do is create the actual um, data set for me in the MySQL product. And I'm going to execute, which is the lightning bolt. And I'll immediately see down here at the bottom a number of action outputs. Um, where it has, has performed each of these commands. I don't need to worry about that right now. Um, I, what it doesn't do is show me the schema over here until I hit refresh. There's a little refresh button here and once I refresh now I can see the Premier Products schema. So if I were to, of course this is the only one I've already you know said to use it, but if I had a number of schemas, I would need to make sure that the one I was working on was selected. And I don't need to do anything else with this text. I can just close that window and now I'm ready to go and to begin my um, assignments. So on page 115, the first uh, MySQL query that it wants is for me to list the number and name of all customers. So to do that, I'm going to need a select statement and I'm going to go ahead and zoom this up a little larger so you can see it better. So I'm going to select the customer number and the customer name from customer. Now if I want to test that, and that's this is what you would have to write. I have just already have them written for speed here. But if I want to test it, I'm going to select it and hit the lightning bolt. And it's going to show me the result data set down here. Now I want to um, move right on into the next SQL query that I write and I'm just gonna go ahead and enter twice in order to give myself a blank line and then I'm gonna go ahead and write the next SQL query so for the next one it wants me to list the complete part table so I need to figure out what that command is in this case select star from part I'm gonna go ahead and and highlight that and execute it if I want to see the resulting data set here I will not be turning in the resulting data set, only the SQL commands. I'm going to go ahead and enter twice so that I leave myself a blank line in between. The next one wants me to list the number and name of every customer represented by sales rep 35. So I need to figure out what the SQL command is. In this case, select customer num, comma, customer name from customer where rep num equal 35. I'm going to go ahead and select that and execute it and I should see that resulting data set. Again remembering between each command to leave a blank line. Number four, list the number and name of all customers that are represented by sales rep 35 and that have credit limits of $10,000. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out what that SQL statement is. Here it is and I'm going to execute it. And I can see one record in my resulting data set. For the next SQL query in this example, it simply changes the AND to OR. Number and name of all customers that are represented by sales rep 35 or that have credit limits of $10,000. So again, I need to figure out what that command is. 
and then I'm going to, if I want to see the results, I'm going to select it and execute. And you can see the resulting data set here. Always remember to leave a blank line in between to make it easier to tell which one's which. The next one wants me for each order, list the order number, order date, number of the customer who placed the order, and name of the customer who placed the order. So I figure out what the command is. Select order num, order date, customer, dot customer num, customer name. I needed the uh, table specified as well as the field because customer num is in more than one table. From customer comma orders where customer dot customer num equal orders dot customer num. That accommodates the join. So I'm using two tables this time and here's my resulting data set. This number seven lists the number and name of all customers represented by Juan Perez. So again, I have to figure out what that SQL statement is. Select customer num, comma customer name, from customer, comma rep, where customer dot rep num equal rep dot rep num, and rep dot last name equal Perez, and rep dot first name equal Juan. I select it, execute see my resulting data set. And looking at the resulting data set just helps me ensure that I don't have a syntax error, um, that I'm actually getting some data from my query. And the last one that we're looking at here, number eight, how many orders were placed on 10 20 2013? How many orders? Select count in star, closing parenthesis, from orders where order date equal. And notice what I had to do with the date. I had to put it in quotation marks and, and spell it out 2013-10-20. And then I get my resulting count of two. And that's confusing to some people, but if I actually looked at the data in the orders table, select star from orders, I would see that that's how the dates are formatted in the orders table. So you may have to do some of these types of commands in order to look at the data so you know exactly how to format the data. Now, that's not part of the example. This is here. So after I've done all of the example exercises, I'm going to take all of the queries that I've written, select them all, and copy. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up Notepad or whatever text editor you prefer to use. Just give me a second here. I should have already had it open, but I didn't. And I'm going to paste. That didn't work. Instead, I went ahead and opened WordPad and I'm pasting it there. I'm going to go ahead and File, Save As. I want to make sure I switch this so that it is saving it as a text document. You're going to name it, uh, you know, in this case, Premiere, page 115, or whatever you want to name it, and save it. You're about to save it in a text only format. Yes, I want to continue. So the file that is uploaded for grading is the final text file. So it should have the text for each query with a blank line in between each query. So it's easy to tell where your, um, pro, your, your lines of code for one query end and the next one begins.